In today's episode, we world build the North Pole, explain the history behind Santa Claus, and world build his alter ego. This is World Explorers, a world building podcast. Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of World Explorers, the world exploring podcast where we take a prompt and then make an entire world out of it. My name is Casey and as always I'm joined with my friend Isaac who shall now say hello, just hello, nothing else. You can do it. I believe in you. I have to connect to a hot spot. Okay, connected. <laughs> You're supposed to do this before I start recording. You know this. <laughs> Every it's week. It's funnier if you say, say hello, and I'm like, I have to connect to a hot spot. Every week. Yeah, you know what? It was funny the first time, but this is like the 10th in a row. Okay, Isaac? Yeah, I just, I realize <laughs> it when your voice cuts out. Uh-huh. I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, wait, this is going to be bad. Okay, quality. what's our prompt? What's our prompt today? Uh, so... I decided a Christmas theme. We are world building the North Pole. Oh, uh, you mean like Santa's Village North Pole? Yes. Santa's Village, Santa's Workshop, North Pole, giant ice crystal of magic from Santa Buddies, uh, the land of dentist uh, elves, and. Oh, narwhals. it took me a moment to get that reference. <laughs> it, took me, it took me way longer to get that reference than I should have. I do know what dentist elves me is referring to. Yeah. Is there an island of so, lost toys off the coast? Yep. When I was little, I used to think that was just Australia. Fun fact, and <laughs> <laughs> like really little. That is wonderful. Yeah. I I outgrew that that belief real quick, but there was there was a short period in my life where I thought it that's that's what Australia was. That's an interesting... Isn't Australia a pretty warm place? Yeah, look, no one needs <laughs> understands three-year-olds Casey's mind. I don't understand any three-year-old's minds, and I don't understand my own mind, so combining those, I'm just hopeless. Makes sense. Okay, yeah. anyway, uh, getting into the world building. Mm-hmm. So I was thinking there's a lot of... Uh, different versions of the North Pole that mm-hmm. exist out there. Like, you know, there's the Santa Claus, there's the classic uh, Rudolph, Red Nosed Reindeer, and a uh, million others. So I was like, we should come up with an idea, with our own version of the North Pole. Um, so, where do you think we should start? Uh, there's a lot of different areas because we can start with the Gift making process, the elves, the sleigh, the reindeers, the wait, magic, wait, I, okay. Santa himself. Crazy idea, crazy idea. Because everyone always thinks like Santa actually just puts up with the cold. But what if Santa just didn't? And instead, the Santa's actual like North Pole is like an igloo where it's like a cool 70 degrees outside at all times. Like he just has this one spot at the North Pole where everything is... And that's nice, where his village is. Warm temperature. Yeah. Okay. 70 degrees all the time. Sure, there's snow billowing outside, but none of it gets in. Like, Santa actually hates snow. Okay. Uh, so, is it like... So, is it just an area that's warm? What's keeping this area warm? Is it inside of... It's Santa. Of- it's magic. Well, what? there's got to be somewhere the magic is coming from. I don't think it's just Santa's there casting a spell... 24 7 to keep it warm. I feel like there should be some sort of a source of. Well, this, yeah, uh, like magic. it's it's the classic children's belief in him that fuels everything. Okay, so it's if children been. believe in him, uh, his magic is able to keep the North Pole warm. Yeah, his little village section of it. All right, we've already got our plot uh, done and figured out. Uh, yep. Children are losing. Uh, their belief in Santa Claus, the North Pole is freezing over, and now we need to reinstill uh, belief. Probably it's going to be a few kids, like maybe two or three kids, are going to go around the world somehow telling everyone Santa Claus is real. Belief comes back. Uh, North Pole's of warmth is restored. Uh, the end. Yep. All right, time to wrap it up. Episode over. Goodbye, everybody. Oh my God. Imagine if we just did that. We're like, you know what? Actually, a five-second episode, five, like two-minute episode today. All done. <laughs>
Yeah, okay, no. yeah, but we there's a lot more to world building in the North Pole than just that. Yeah, because you know everything kind of changes when you take out the snow and. But honestly, I feel like this is actually a really good representation of how a lot of people's Christmases are, because I would say majority of people don't have snow on Christmas. I'm not sure what the actual number is, but yeah, a lot of people don't have snow. Like, like I, even in the U.S., where snow is a big deal, there's a lot of states that don't have snow. Yeah, like, I'm thinking back my Christmases, and I, majority of my Christmases, I've, there was no snow. Now, I did have one Christmas, which was horrible, where it snowed the day before, all melted, was completely snowless on Christmas, and then snowed the day after. I've had, yeah, I've had days where it's like, snow, it snows the day before Christmas, then it melts, then the day after Christmas, there's snow. Yeah, it's like, wow just wow be that way but yeah a lot, a lot of people don't don't have snow because it's for some of them it's summer uh but for most of us it's just it comes in the early stages of winter i mean i have a lot of snow now like it is snowing outside right now and i'm not happy about it and then there's hope yeah it's snowing here too and yeah. then there's hawaii which is just warm all year round yeah i mean um, other places are too but uh, yeah, so I guess we should talk about elves and, like, what what they're like now that they don't have to deal with the horrible freezing temperatures. Okay, so the elves. Are we going with... Uh, which type of elves are we going with? Are we going with uh, the normal person but short kind of elves? Are these elves immortal or are they do they have a limited lifespan? Uh, are these the tiny idiotic types of elves that are like six inches tall and don't know what they're doing like from Rise of the Guardians or uh, Christmas Chronicles I mean I I like I've always liked the idea of uh, more magical intelligent elves versus okay, so idiotic got... crazy because I never understood how those elves were helpful well they aren't it's the yetis that do all the work yeah, but, like, I, I still like the idea that it's the elves that do it, and therefore they should have some intelligence. Like, I'm... Alright. Yeah. So, the, uh, so in this one, the elves are intelligent. Uh, yeah. How tall are they? Uh... I don't think that they should be, like, uh... Like, uh, Tolkien elves and be tall. They should. We should keep them short because Christmas. We don't want to go too far. Okay, from. but no. N- let's not do Santa Claus where they're just children. All right. Yeah. Because so, that uh, was questionable. Yeah, it was. <laughs> you watch very that. Weird. You watch that movie, and you're like, "Are they?" So Santa does slave labor, like children slave. Yeah, but then I had a lot of questions about that movie, like. Like, the Santa Claus, the first Santa Claus dies, and everybody seems oddly cheerful. No, let's like, not, let's not get into, get into it. Okay? It's not worth okay. it. Okay, yeah. Uh, staying on topic. Um, uh uh-huh. So, these elves. How... How... T- uh, I, I, do, do they look like humans, or are do they look... Different I mean, I kind of like the idea we go completely different from humans, because then it's less creepy. Because whenever, whenever you see elves, they always look like either demons or little children. And both are creepy in different ways. Okay, so what do these elves look like? Uh... I mean, I don't know why I got this in my head, but I, I, I had like this funny idea of mini Grinches. But they're, <laughs> they're the elves. Okay, so they're a bunch of tiny, green, furry people. Yeah. Like a mix uh, between yetis and elves is a Grinch, right? I think so. I, I guess so. Just wouldn't make them be? extra grumpy. No, Well, these guys wouldn't be grumpy like the Grinch. They're elves. Yeah, they'd be cheerful. They'd be cheerful and they'd be... Because they, they feed off of Santa's magic. Uh, I don't mean that in a creepy way, of course. Or maybe I do. Who knows? But... Yeah, they they use Santa's magic to create toys and help Santa out with all his stuff. Okay, so maybe the more magic Santa has, the more efficient they are. Uh, that that could be a thing, like or how energetic they are. Like okay, how much so energy it level seems is. kind of odd that everything is running off of Santa's 
magic. I feel like Santa should really be getting his magic from something, and then everything. Well, it's the, the Christmas magic. I guess I was just calling it Santa's magic, so but it's, it's more Christmas like the magic. airborne magic. Of but Christmas, it seems to all be like belief. centralized within the North Pole, and that's what's keeping that area warm, and not the rest of the world. So. I feel like there should be some item. In the okay, pole. okay. Actually, here's the thing. Like, weirdly scientific. But you know how there was, like, that whole scare with the ozone layer? And yeah. was that over the South Pole or the North Pole? I think it's the South. Well, so, you know how we have that. But, like, it's just now, it's the same way, like, it, all of the Christmas magic just finds its way to the North Pole. Because that's just how it works. Like, that's how it clusters. Uh, in the same way that the oz- the chemicals that was killing the ozone layer all, layer all gathered in the South Pole. Like, it just found its way there. So this found yeah, its like way. That's like through wind currents, Karen. Is, is, magic, okay. is magic affected by wind currents? Yeah, stuff? it goes in the opposite direction, so that way it can get to the right <laughs> pole. <gasps> Magic's weird. But maybe the magic creates the wind and it like pushes off, so it the wind blows it and then it kind of go drifts off the other direction. Okay, so this thing with the ozone layer is being caused by pe- by a bunch of children believing in Santa Claus. No, it's actually that <laughs> saved our lives. Okay, because it pushed it into an area where no one was affected by it. Okay, so if anything, Christmas magic saved us. And then we found out what was causing it and we removed it from the world and now it's healing itself and we're all fine again. Okay, so if everybody stops, so in this world, if everybody stops believing in Santa Claus, now our original plot idea where children stop believing in Santa Claus, the North Pole is freezing over, suddenly becomes children stop believing in Santa Claus, the North Pole is freezing over, but also over here at the South Pole, there's this whole thing going on with the ozone layer, and... No, no, the ozone. No, I was just using the ozone layer as an example. No, what happens is the wind stops. The wind stops. Okay. Yeah, which causes uh, a lot of problems. That yeah, suddenly no windmills work and nobody is able to fly their kites on Christmas. No, night. it's a little. It's a little bit worse like that because you know how places get water and how like the earth stays. It keeps like a generalized temperature and all that. It's because of the wind. The wind is very useful in that. So if we don't yeah. have the wind, we have like it's a it's a global catastrophe. Which is why I would like to vote that the magic is changed to just like a belief in Christmas more so than just Santa. Because I don't know. Or like I have I, what I, what was what's like a generalized feeling that has always been around, but is, like, just strongly associated with Christmas. Joy? Giving? Hope? Hope. Uh. Generosity? Joy? Joy? <laughs> um. Uh. Selfishness? I um, uh, let's not have the North Pole on selfishness. Joy? <laughs> uh, so our options are, our joy and, or giving. Joy, giving, selfishness. No selfishness. Um, Look, I don't think that will sit well with the control group. Many other, I think there's just too many other uh, holidays and events and stuff that cause joy around the world. Yeah, I, but Christmas... Uh, is, well, because my whole idea of this is that this has been happening... Something that's been happening since the beginning the beginning of the like universe. The universe started and this is a thing that's always occurred. What happened with Santa Claus is that Saint Nicholas, who he's based off of, uh, instead of dying, actually went on a uh, excursion to the North Pole. Uh, he was the first to find the center of it, and there he found a collection of magic, which he then was able to tap into to have eternal life and to create this village of his, uh, I assume the elves already lived there and were already using it and stuff, and had already set oh, up. Oh, maybe the... he was. Ooh, backstory lore idea. Okay. Saint Nicholas was like freezing to. He was on the brink of death, and the elves used the North Pole magic to make him immortal. Yeah. They try and save his life. Yeah, and then in payment, he's now spending the rest of his life spreading joy to children and Christmas and, like, hiding up this holiday so that way he can, the magic stays alive. Because think about, like, uh, Christmas did some amazing things in keeping hope and joy alive, especially during seasons like World War One and World War Two. 
like the yeah. world wars and like christmas pro was like probably the thing that was keeping i don't know people's spirits up in a and not while, so good spirit uh, Saint nicholas was at the north pole the elves stuffed him full of cookies to fatten him up i mean does he ha does santa actually have to be fat like no one's actually seen santa we just assume we uh, but that's like the classic vision of Santa. I mean, if you're taking a cookie from every household that celebrates Christmas on uh, one night, you're gonna get pretty fat. But Isaac, this is the same guy who can poof himself into houses, has flying <laughs> reindeer, can go around the world in one night. I mean, mind you, it's a lot easier than you might actually think, but that's not the point. Uh, and Oz has a North Pole that is always like a cool 70 degrees and has a bunch of elves who run off on magic to create things for every boy and girl. Oh, maybe it's like uh, I mean, if he doesn't classic, want to be fat, he doesn't have to be fat. Maybe it's the classic uh, Rudolph the Red Nose Reindeer situation where he's too thin and then has to get fat around Christmas. <laughs> Why? What? Like, remember, Mrs. Claus was fattening him up, and she's uh, like, everybody's going to be expecting a fat Santa. You're thin, so here, eat. I don't understand why she was doing that, because no one's going to see him. That's kind I mean, of all point. the children who set traps for him will, because <laughs> how often has that plot been done in stories? Yeah, surprisingly often. One of these days, we're going to get one of those stories, and the Santa's like, Oh, you caught me! It's not like you're the 80th child today to do it. Okay, let's get our little adventure out of the way. You get ten minutes with me, take some pictures, photos. Yeah, no one's going to believe these are real anyways. Ha <laughs> ha, joke's on you. Uh, just... <laughs> All right, I'm off to the next house. Remember, keep the Christmas spirit alive. Your parents will just think that was some random present by your aunt. Bye! And up the chimney goes. <laughs> you're going to forget this when you turn 20. <laughs> Or you'll think it's all a dream. Yeah, exactly. Like, I love it. Yep. Yes, that needs to happen. Yeah, just, it just, a cynical, a slightly cynical thing. Just because, you know, he's been doing this for centuries at this point. And while he's, like, a great giving guy and he loves this, at the same time, he's he's probably just, like, amused by children's antics at this point. Like, he's seen everything. Yeah, like, I don't see how you could come up with anything new to catch Santa. Yeah. And even if you could, uh, the original, or one of the original stories Santa was, he touches his nose to go up a chimney. Mm hmm Like, yeah, how are you going to contain somebody who can do that? You can't. <laughs> you just don't. Look, if Santa doesn't want to be seen, he won't be seen. And if he does want to be seen, no one would believe you anyways. Yep. Uh, okay, so... So, uh, so uh, we got our immortal Saint Nicholas living with the uh, the uh, little Grinch elves. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. What about the reindeer? Where do the reindeer come in? I mean, we have to have the reindeer. Children will cry. Uh, assuming children watch this, which they really shouldn't be. We're not we're not a children's podcast, but uh. So is the North Pole just populated? well populated with reindeer or did he get reindeer from somewhere else and then made the reindeer immortal I mean, uh, could, so yeah, I, I, yeah I guess well reindeer would have to be introduced into the equation because think about Saint yeah, Nicholas so is a time before cars right and he was probably yeah. like hey I need some horses that we can turn magical so that way we can go around the world giving these presents like we want to do. Uh, what what you got? And you know, the elves are like, uh, one moment, and they come back with a reindeer. It's like, we don't have any horses, we got reindeer. No, they probably think these are horses. I bet they called them horses for the longest time. Oh, maybe he t describes horses to them. It's like, there are these tall, hoof creatures, oftentimes they're brown, um... They've got, like, a mane around like them. Yeah, they got, like, a mane. They're, they're uh, very rideable. Yeah, they, you could ride yeah, them. they're rideable. And they're like, oh, we have those. And they bring back some reindeer. They're like, uh... And Santa's like, yeah, sure, that works. Let's go. <laughs> I'm, I'm not picky. Uh, and, and then they go and they build a sleigh. And, the, and I guess Christmas magic makes them fly. Yep. Because Christmas magic can do anything. Makes you immortal, makes you fly, makes you cookies. Yep, creates wind. Creates wind. I'm just trying, uh, look, I'm just trying to get it to the North Pole, okay? Okay. 
I'm, I'm making um, the North Pole make sense, other than it's a secluded area, which you could easily hide out in. Alright, so, what else have we got? Uh, how about, let's, say, let's talk about how some traditions started. How did the coal in the stocking tradition start? Oh, coal. oh that. Yeah. I don't think that should be Santa. I think there should be another entity. <gasps> An anti-Santa. Yeah. The, the Santa alter ego. Which is a actual thing, and I can't remember what he's called. Uh, what's Santa backwards? Hold on. It's At Atnas. Atnas. That would be his name. Is Atnas. Not to be confused with Agnes, which is the female, no. which is his wife. No, this is uh, Atnas. Yeah, I, the I was alter watching. Ego yeah. Santa, and um, he goes around the world on Christmas Eve, sticking coal into children's stockings who were bad, and he makes the evil laugh. Yeah, as he swoops through the night, a shadow in the dark. Um, yeah, because he would he would have all the same ability. So, uh, okay, you know how you were talking about like selfishness. Yeah, that's what feeds him. His power is selfishness. Okay. Okay, well, bring selfishness in. You can have it. Uh, because selfishness is yes. is an emotion that's heightened around Christmas, and therefore his powers would also grow as Santa's does as joy and giving. So I guess selfishness and giving would make more sense than selfishness and joy. Yeah. So, like, the spirit of giving is that. And obviously, St. Nicholas wanted to create a holiday to heighten the sense of giving, but little did he know by doing that, he was also heightening the sense of selfishness, allowing his anti-rival... Because they, kind of, they, kind of, they go hand in hand, like, giving yes, selfishness. Yes, because how many times will the parents say, I gift my child a gift? And then it's like, but this isn't what I wanted! Give me something else. Yeah. All the time. It's obnoxious. Some children are spoiled. Just a little too much. Yep. Just a little. So, okay, so we got this alter ego Santa. What, where else can we go with this? Uh, so six coal in children's stockings. Uh, is does he go? Where did he come from originally? Like, oh yeah, I Santa, guess because Santa's a real person, he has to be too, yeah. doesn't he? Did did he manifest when Santa became immortal? Or okay, here here's the thing, Isaac. There's another character in like Saint Nicholas's uh, story. I can't remember if it was like a mayor or king or whatever title he had. Whoever it was that was, uh, oh, I'm trying. I can't even remember. I was like story. taxes were high or something like that. I think, and there was people who were going to need to, like, sell their daughters, I think, and then he was giving them money so that they didn't have to. Yeah, and he was putting uh, them through their, and their stockings that they were hanging to dry, and that was the whole... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so uh, whoever that person is could have... So... So I mean, somehow, can... some weird thing happened, all right? And, you know, after this whole this whole thing came about, they ended up on the same expedition. We don't ask how it happened. You can make uh, make up a story for it. And, you know, the elves, not knowing better, ended up saving both of them. And one, St. Nicholas became, like, this amazing thing focused on, like, giving and stuff. Meanwhile, this other guy... Cont it's... So I think what happens is when the elves gave their magic, what it did was heighten this, like, one aspect of themselves that is associated with the magic, like, what the, the magic is fed with. And so, one got ended up getting, like, absorbing the selfishness, and one the giving, and there we have it. We have Santa, who goes around giving presents, and we have this other guy giving, giving out coal, and yeah. I, I have a question. If he was the mayor or whoever it was uh, that opposed St. Nicholas... Why coal? Like, St. Nicholas was all about giving gifts and presents and stuff. So it makes sense. But why coal? Why does he give coal? You would what think he'd be the kind of guy who's taking stuff. I don't even know what the story behind, like, coal was. 
Like, what is even his motive? Like, actually, uh, if I, I mean, what would make sense to me? I don't think this is actually w- the reason behind Cole because I can't think of it. But like the whole idea that, or at least what I had always thought, I this is not canon. I have no clue. Look it up. Uh, but was that the reason that Cole got put in your stocking is because you hung Cole over a fireplace? So what would happen is if you were a naughty person, Santa wouldn't give you anything. Instead, he would show that he came. By picking up coal from a fireplace and just putting it in. Or, like, ashes and cinder and stuff. Uh, so, it was kind of just a thing like, hey, I was here, but I'm not giving you anything. Like, a sign that, like, hey, Santa is still real, but you weren't good enough to get a present. I like that. It's pa- It's more painful when you think about it. Along with a little letter that says, certified naughty list member. I, I feel like some people <laughs> would uh, think that a better present than anything else they could get. Just saying, I don't think you should certify it. Yeah. It's just the coal. Put into the... And that's when he started... Like, getting coal is crushing. On a soul. Yeah. And so, you know, this guy would be doing that. And who says he doesn't take things? Things go missing in the world all the time. Maybe that's what he does. Okay, maybe, just a side note, that's what he does in his spare time. Instead of... He doesn't really live in the North Pole for obvious reasons. Uh, instead, he goes about the world just, like, taking things from people. Like, okay. you know how you have valuable things go missing all the time? That's him. Okay, but I'm just wondering, like, why does he target the naughty kids? Like, shouldn't he be targeting everyone? Especially the people who are good, because those are the people who uh, Santa is giving gifts to? Why would he... Like, it seems like he's helping Santa. Well, I think they kind of have a... They've had a mutual agreement. I'm sure, uh, following those, I'm sure there was some horrible event in the world that we could use as an example, where he probably went around and was just full out to everyone. And then, you know, the wind stopped blowing and the world was about to end, and he found out he was also losing his ability. Because if people can't give things to others and they're living in poverty, you find that, honestly, selfishness also dies out, too. Like, you can't really be selfish when you're too busy focusing on just making sure you get the next meal. Or a lot of families, maybe, actually. Maybe. Um, also, there are a lot of families where it's like, okay, I gotta make sure these children get fed, even if it means I don't. Like, that was the majority yeah, so of families. Like, if anything, selfish is like... fluctuating like, back and forth and backfiring all the time. Sometimes he's strong, sometimes he's not. Sometimes they're both strong, sometimes they're both not. And so it's like, okay, we need to stabilize a system here. How about I give gifts to whoever I want, and whoever I don't give gifts to, you're welcome to just stick coal in their stockings because they were bad anyway. Yeah, they have this meeting twice a year, because you got to look over the, tw- the list twice, uh, where they come together uh, twice a year, and they look through the list, and they decide who gets what child. And he gets his list, Santa, he gets the naughty list, Santa gets the nice list, and then they, like, split ways. And then, you know, yeah, uh, and then like off-season, he takes from whomever he wants. Like, he just steals random things and stuff. So, if something valuable of yours is missing, it's uh, actually uh, Antis. Did it. Antis took it. No more your socks got sent to the ultimate dimension. Like, Antis is behind it all. But only when you, like, really valuable things go missing. Like, uh, a ring. Atmos. Atmos. I mean, Antis is... Awesome. Santa Santa's sounds person. better, but Atmos is Santa spelled backwards. So we're we going with what? Atmos? Atmos? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> you don't like, know anymore. Ah, uh, this one sounds but well, I feel like it should have some meaning. Yeah. And also, a lot of people probably look at this and be like, uh, Antis? That's almost Santa spelled backwards. I mean, Antis is, yeah. Yeah, it's gonna be Antis. Okay, Antis it is. Tess, Tess. Uh, okay, so Antis. we're not going with Santa spelled backwards. No, I thought, wait, isn't that Santa spelled backwards? No, Atnes. Atnes. Uh, or, uh, or not Atnes, uh. Hold on. I'm so confused here. Okay. Atnes is... Wait, is it more like Atnes? Atnes, I think it's it would be pronounced Atnes. But that's I mean, stupid. in this day of age, have you known that, like, no name is spelled the way it's... Is, no name yeah, is pronounced so, the way it's spelled. So, so honestly, if we want to do Atnes, 
If we want to do Atnus because it sounds nicer and have it spelled like Santa backwards, I don't think anyone would bat an eye at it. Atnus, yeah, I think, I think it would Atnus, happen naturally. Right. Like, he would be writing out his name like that, but then people would, like, be... It would fall into what's more natural, which in my case is Atnus. Yeah, but they would still me, spell it the same. People would be like, no, uh, Atnus or Atnay. Well, yeah, or... and then you have those know-it-all kids who will have uh, punctuation pronunciation debates with you about it constantly. Yes. Or, and, and no, you know... It'll, it'll, uh, it Atnus. Yeah, and they'll make it up to uh, top, top five... Uh, figures whose name is mispronounced constantly is Atnus because it's actually Atnos or Atni I don't even know. Look, I'm I'm calling him Atnus and leaving it there. Yeah, Atnus. We're just yeah. saying Atnus. Yes, we're it's saying it's easier to pronounce. It's e but it's spelled Santa backwards. Yes. He's a special child. So I'm gonna say that uh, his name came after Santa. Yeah, obviously. Now, how, now question, how did St. Nicholas get his name? I think... I guess it's Saint, or Saint I, Santa, or Saint Santa. I think, yeah, Saint Saint. And Scott. then maybe later on, uh, they just sort of added the uh in yeah. there. Just so Saint stuff. became Santa, Santa, Santa. Yeah. It just evolved over time to Santa, and then he took on, and then he said, "I'm going to be doing the opposite of what you're doing, so I'm going to reverse the name and be called Atnus." Or maybe that would, or maybe he just became sort of a folklore. Sort of Which maybe means that everybody, where he was given that name by people, because people knew that he was the opposite of Santa. Which probably means at one point in his life, uh, this guy was called Tanas. Yeah, he would. He would have been. <laughs> at, well, at one point, he was Tanas, and then he became Antis. At some point, yeah, Tanas sounds so much cooler. I'm not gonna lie, <laughs> Tanas. It sounds more I mean, sinister. <laughs> It does. Like, if you really <laughs> want to go into some deeper world building, you could have them still called Tanas and then explain how they each got their names. Yeah, I kind of I kind of like Tanas better. And, like, his name probably would have originally been something like Tanase or Tanai, Tanias, Tanias. Yeah. Because Saint has an I in there. Yeah. And then later on, people just shortened it to Tanas. Tanas, so now he's uh, Tanas. And that's carried over, and everybody else just called Santa... Santa. Yeah. And that's how the na and that's how we got the names Santa and Tanas. Perfect. They're both from they're both from the name Saint. Look at us. Look at us building lore. I love Tanas. I think he's a great addition to like I want him to be like a real val thing now. Like warning kids against being selfish and stuff or just like uh oh my this valuable thing of mine went missing and like whispers of Tanas in the in the world. Being like, oh, Tanas probably took it, and it's in his, which probably means he has a cave in the North Pole, like hidden somewhere where Santa doesn't know. That's just full of people's stuff. And I'm gonna say that if, uh, if you listen closely to the coal in your stocking, you can hear the voice of hi him whisper, Tanas. <laughs> I just thought it would be like a light, a soft, evil uh, crackle. Like, say, okay, it's, a, you know a fun Easter egg that probably not many people would know about is if you actually, like, uh, burnt that one piece of coal, it would actually burn out to him laughing and, like, fill the room for a second, and then it would dissolve. Like, really like, creepily. Like, you burn the, if you throw the coal onto the fire, suddenly there's, like, this, uh, cackling or something. Yeah, like a light Maybe cackling. Like a, like a really creepy crack or cackling. Like, you could almost say it's just, like, uh, the fire crackling, but there's something really sinister about it. Yeah, it just sounds off. And then people would explain it away and say, no, it's just your imagination. But true believers, you're, you're true believers would hear it really well. Yeah. Because they like look for it. Th you just expect to hear it. It's just your exactly. imagination. You want to hear it, so you hear it. I know, it's But it's tenuous. just the, the crackling of the fire. Yes, look at us. Look at this. Tanas is the best. No one's gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna start using Tanas as like a regular thing and work and around the house. We were just gonna be so confused. <laughs> but like, gonna have a person to say, "So I bought this thing here and then went missing. Can you find it?" I'm like, oh, Tanas probably took it. It's long gone by now." And they'll just be like, oh, "I'm sorry." <laughs> well, then you have to go and explain who Tanas is, and like, we can spread it around the world. Oh, like, wait, you don't know who Tanas is? This other part of Christmas tradition, and we will start this huge thing worldwide and our podcast will still somehow be less than 100 subscribers. Yeah, we will have come <laughs> up with Tanas, but yeah, you know what? Uh, Tanas, Tanas feels like the thing that would grow bigger than this podcast. He, I, he has the potential. Hint, hint. There's a big red button down there. Press it.
Oh, the subscribe button. Join the, join the yes, or on or whatever it is. Because if it's on a podcast, like different podcasts have different buttons to click. So click whatever it is. Like follow, follow, subscribe, uh, whatever it is. Watch do it. closely. Yeah, whatever it is, do it. We have a consistent upload schedule, so that probably helps. Circle like an eagle above our heads. Okay, not great. I we are not dead. <laughs> We're not roadkill. Okay. But to be, to be honest, I think I think we're good here. Yeah, I think this is a uh, pretty I'm, well I'm ha- show. I feel like we've created every now and then on this podcast. I feel like we've created something truly special, and Tanas feels like that to me. And we also got an epic name for him. It took yeah, way like, too long, like half the <laughs> podcast, but we well, got we a good a name. name. We did a good name, guys. This we time. did it. Be proud of us. <laughs> Progress! Yay. This is like the first time okay, we've named so, something properly. So now we need to give all of the elves their own individual names. We're done! We're saying goodbye! Okay, so I'm thinking Mikey and uh, Johnny It was nice. It, uh, and we enjoyed talking Paul. to you guys about this. Spread spread Tanas, not the spear of Tanas. We don't need any selfishness here, but spread, spread the lore of Tanas and let's see, let's see if we can make him a thing, because I, I believe in us. But. Uh, that is all the time we have for this week. Uh, join us next week where we haven't decided if it's going to be the Christmas special or if we're putting the Christmas special a day after Christmas. But you'll find out next week what we decide because we'll have to decide then. But, yeah. that that's, that's not a Christmas special? I mean, it's Christmas themed, but it's not the Christmas special that you have planned. Or was this the Christmas special? This was the Christmas special. I think you did it like <laughs> earlier and I just didn't click on it. Uh, I don't know what the plan was to do it today. No, it wasn't. Okay, so I'll come up with another one. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed our early Christmas special that I didn't even realize was the Christmas special. Uh, I... I I'm pretty sure we talked about at least waiting a week, but what you know what? This is this is a take a lesson from this guys. Communicate with the people you're working with better. Cause clearly we were not doing that. Uh but that's this is that's all the time we have tonight. Uh see you next week with another Christmas themed world for us to build. Farewell. Goodbye. Merry Christmas! We're all building the North Pole, and Tenos will haunt you in your dreams and put the coal in your stocking. Merry, 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 merry Tenosmus. Merry, 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 merry Tenosmus. Merry, 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 merry Tenos. <laughs> well, oh, the mic didn't catch the. The last note there. sounded good, like before it got cut off. But well done. <laughs>